<clears throat> the deer, they love my garden. Welcome to this episode of Sustainable Stace. I'm gonna show you four different ways to deer-proof your veggie garden. Stay tuned. I'm Stacy Taves. For me, healthy food and sustainability are totally connected. You can grow it yourself. Nature is generous. Welcome to this episode, guys. Deer proofing your veggie garden four different ways. If you don't have any time, maybe you've just moved onto a property or it's short term that you're gonna be there and you don't wanna put a lot of infrastructure in, the little parts and pieces you need for this first of four methods is the simplest, the least expensive, and it's guaranteed to work. Build a hoop house. If you build a little hoop house like the one behind you, you can decide the dimensions of your bed anywhere you wish. And basically you need two or three things to put it in place. And I'll just show you quickly how to do this. And then we'll look at three different fencing methods if you're willing to put in a little bit of infrastructure. Let me show you how to do this. This is really simple guys. This garden bed is about a meter and a half wide, four and a half, five feet, and it's about 12 feet long. So four meters long, it could be as long as you want, but the width is really essential for making this idea work for the most cost-effective way. All I've used is some piping that I had kicking around to hold things down for a windy day. So I'll pull that off and show you what's behind it. Underneath, very simply put, I've got some starts growing here. Every meter, meter and a half, I have a piece of PVC piping, and this is just half inch PVC piping. When you have a bed that's four and a half to five feet wide, you buy PVC pipe in 20 foot lengths, you cut it into three equal pieces, and each of those thirds will fit in one hoop. And to put it in place, I just use rebar, I pound it halfway in, and when it's in, then I shove the pipe right over. There you go, there's the rebar right there. That's so simple. When you put in these sequentially or symmetrically and you have a piece of rebar on each side, put a piece of PVC pipe over it and then you can drape a plastic sheet or this material is called Rime cloth. And basically for about 15, 20 bucks, you can put one of these in and you've deer proofed it. If you don't have a way to put a fence in or you don't wanna put money into infrastructure, that's your quickest guaranteed way because deer are not gonna eat through this to get at your veggies that are inside. And you've also basically built a little bit of a greenhouse which is gonna accelerate or lengthen your growing season. So that's step number one. Let me show you three different methods of fencing to deer proof your veggies. Guys, this method of fencing and keeping out deer is really, really simple to do and quite inexpensive. Posts at your corners and nylon meshing with a piece of wire running through the top of the nylon meshing. At each corner, or at the top of each post, I used one fencing staple. And I don't insert it all the way. I put it at the very top of the post once I've sunk the post in with a sledge. And then I just insert the fencing staple halfway into the top. When I run a piece of bare galvanized wire through the top of the meshing, I just have it cut a little longer than the mesh itself and I bend it over. So when I wanna go in, I don't even have a door. See that? I just open it up and I'm in. And then when I wanna close it up, I just have to find the staple at the top, run it through, pull it tight. The challenge is if you put these posts in not strong enough, when you create tension with the wire and pull it, it'll start to bring your posts in. So you need big enough posts pounded in deep enough so that at least the tension of your arm pulling the wire tight will not pull in the opposing post. But this type of mesh, it cost me, is a 100 foot length, I think $60. $60 for a 100 foot or 30 meter length. It did the entire perimeter of this garden. So it's about 25 feet on each of the four sides. Very inexpensive and really in about 30 minutes, I could pull up my posts, pull out my mesh and I could use it in another place as well. The downside to this material, even though it's very quick and easy to put up, is that though deer won't jump in over it, I've had it up for four years, no deer have come in rabbits will eat underneath it. Now you will see on the ground at different levels, I've just put down pieces of metal or pieces of wood to hold down the bottom. And that way the wind, because this is very lightweight material, doesn't push it away like a shower curtain in a breeze. This method guys is a pretty traditional type fence, which if you're gonna build in permanent infrastructure and you have maybe quite long runs, this would be a great way to go. Just putting in pressure treated posts and putting up in this case, six foot fencing material. If you buy this from a normal feed or animal husbandry supply shop, generally the same format will work out that the squares in the fencing material will be larger at the top and they'll gradually get smaller at the bottom. So that in my case, deer are being kept out so they can't come in from this side but chickens run around on the other side and they or rabbits can't get through easily. So smaller gaps at the bottom, bigger gaps at the top where there's gonna be less attempts to penetrate. 
All that you need in this case is some posts that you can easily drive in. I have about 10 foot spans or three meter spans between my posts and you need some fencing staples. Boom, little guys like that. And you need your selection of fencing material. It's pretty hard sometimes to get all your posts exactly or precisely straight. If you're a bit OCD and you're trying to do straight lines, you're gonna have to really line things up. One big word of caution, you might have electrical, sewer, or water lines down below. You start pounding in posts, beware that you're not gonna puncture something. You'll have some very unfortunate surprises and what you thought was maybe gonna do an afternoon job starts to take a lot longer. A few other words just to note when you do this. When you're putting in your fencing staples, don't sink them all the way. Very often as you try to create Create tension on your wire and create a nice even pull on your wire you're gonna find you have to reset your staples so don't pound them on the, all the way another thing is use a post that's taller than your fencing material because just so happens you might have bionic deer in your area in my case I've put in a six foot fence and I've been successful but I know that deer can jump more than six feet but they happen to be not only prolific and voracious here they're opportunistic if they can find food on this side of the fence where there's no jumping they will often settle for that if it's a six foot jump I see them often basically just like nah, I'm not gonna worry about it but I have been in places where a six foot fence doesn't keep them out. Here my post is much taller than six feet. I can put other pieces of wire up here if I need to because I find out perhaps that the deer are clearing the area. The other thing would be about sinking your posts. If you've got a lot of power and might and a great big sledgehammer and you're good at just booming away, go for it. But one of the quickest ways if you have maybe six or more holes to do is get a post hole auger. The most beautiful post hole augers have four handles. One for a person on this side, a pair of handles for a person on this side, and a pair of handles for a person on the other side, and a motor mounted on top. And you pull it kind of like a traditional lawn mower or rotor chiller motor to get it started. And it's got a big, huge corkscrew auger that goes down, drills your hole, pulls up, and boom! You can put your post in there and pack it in. So that's a really nice traditional way to do a fence. You're kind of putting down roots when you take this type of fence, but it's gonna be one of your most guaranteed solid infrastructure ways to keep deer out. Now let's look at one other method. Guys, I think this method of keeping the deer out is ingenious. It's incredibly inexpensive, and to this point in my life, it's been very effective. Now, the perimeter of the property that we've moved on to has a four-foot perimeter fence. This four-foot perimeter fence, a bit over a meter tall, is coming, you know, kind of waist, belly height on me. Any deer, no matter how arthritic, even paraplegic, is gonna drag its carcass over this fence and find your garden on the other side so a four foot fence is not going to keep out the deer but what it does have going for it is it's already got some posts and to those posts I've lashed two by twos and what I did is I bought two by sixes to save some money and I ran two by sixes on my table saw and I actually got three two by twos out of one two by six and these are seven feet tall so you know two and a half meters tall. I just used some bare galvanized wire and I wrapped it around the existing post here and at the bottom. So now this is firmly in place and I'm ready to start putting up my fencing material which involves simply clear fishing line and a very visually visible piece of colored line as well. I chose orange. Now here's what I've done. Above the existing fence structure, I'll just bring the camera a little closer and I'll show you what I did. So above the existing fence structure, I went up one hand span and I put in a screw. And then I went up another hand span and I put in another screw. And I just kept doing that. And the reason I chose a hand span is that I think, my, and it's been right so far in my guessing, that a deer is like, that's too tight of a space to try to jump through. This is about 20 to 25 centimeters if you're thinking metric. At each of these screw points becomes an anchor point for either the clear fishing line or the colorful line. And I purposely chose the first line that the deer would encounter to be fishing line, which is virtually invisible, especially if it comes hunting veggies at night. My theory is it comes up it bumps its nose into this clear fishing line and goes what the heck is that I didn't see that I'm glad I didn't jump into that oh there's another one that I do see and then you can't see it in the camera I'll just move back a touch whoop further up there's another one and actually above that there's another one so there's four lines that I put in place one fishing line then one bright line and then two more fishing line on top of that and here's the beauty of it guys and I'm gonna bring it in a little closer for you to see this and here's the beautiful thing if your line starts to become slack is that you just can unwind it like that or wind it like that and so in the first day or two, while the line was finding its tension, I found that if I could wind it one way with the one direction from the screw and the other direction from the other screw, I could make it as taut, 
tight as I wanted. There's one word of caution or note before you start setting up your post, which I've done about every 80 to 100 feet apart. So think of it in terms of 30 meters from each one of these posts, which is an incredibly long distance with nothing having to hold it up because it's very lightweight. You have to have a clear fence line. Cut out all your branches, all your brush, any vines or creeping material that's coming over. You gotta have a clear fence line before you start putting this in, but it's so inexpensive and so quick, you can do thousands of feet in a day if you've already got an existing infrastructure like I did. I'd suggest that if you're gonna install this method, which is very worth trying if you've got existing post and fence infrastructure at a low height, is put in both of your extreme ends of a run first and there and only there, wrap your string thoroughly around your post so that it's anchored well and not just holding onto a screw. But when you get into your mid spans between one end and the other end, do not wrap it around your post. I've seen other fencing videos saying, wrap it around your post, bad idea. If the post breaks anywhere or the line breaks anywhere, you'll have a mess to fix up. Up. But if you just pull a bit of your tension in on a screw here and you don't wrap it around the post, it's going to be a lot easier to mend and a lot easier to pay out or pull in line as you go. So only wrap it around your posts at your extreme ends and you got this baby. Yes, it's true guys, you heard me say it. Deer are prolific, they're voracious, and they're opportunistic. And we've shown you four different ways to keep the deer out of your veggies so that you can enjoy them without sharing them with the deer. I hope that's been super helpful for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And if you guys have been watching it on YouTube, thanks a lot. Please subscribe to this channel so you get more ideas that are hopeful, helpful, and healthy. Till next time.